Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Tiffany Liu. Our research is about using quantum neural networks, quantum vision transformers, and the mathematical morphological reconstruction algorithms to detect brain tumors. Oh, I'm Tiffany Liu. I'm Ruthie Sharma. Oh, I'm Ryan Lee. And I'm Siobhan Shmansala. And what happened to Isha? Did she fall off? No, I, I said. Oh, you were very quiet. Oh, All right. Yeah. So the problem that we're addressing is brain tumors, which are the uncontrollable growth of cells that form an abnormal mass of tissue in the brain. And these brain tumors can appear in the glioma, in genoma, and pituitary areas, either being benign, non-cancerous, or malignant, being cancerous. They come with symptoms of fluid blocks, brain pressure, internal bleeding, and loss of balance, vision, and memory. The rising rate of undiagnosed and inaccurate brain tumors is affected by current approaches, which cannot detect the formation of these tissues early. The National Brain Tumor Society states that 1 million Americans live with a brain tumor, where 94,390 people get a diagnosis, which includes a 35.7 relative survival rate in 2019 alone. Our team is approaching this inefficiency by compiling the quantum environment applicable features of the Mathematical Morphological Reconstruction, or MMR for short, the Quantum Convolutional Neural Network, or QCNN for short, and its enhancer, the Quantum Vision Transformers, or QVT for short to result in an early stage detection model with SkimMage, TensorFlow, OpenCV2, and Qiskit. So currently, the most common form of tumor detection is manual detection through MRI scans or magnetic resonance imaging. So these detailed images are then examined manually by radiologists. And this clearly poses several issues. First, the amount of data has been rapidly increasing, so it's become a lot more inefficient and tedious to manually sort through all of the data. It's also um, a form of detection that relies heavily on the experience of the radiologists, which can also be really prone to error, and many areas don't have access to the re resources or radiologists necessary for this detection. So in an attempt to address some of these issues while also improving accuracy and speed, there have been many recent developments in deep learning approaches, specifically with CNN algorithms that seem to have been successful. And that leads to the basis of our research which is to see if the MMR and QCNN algorithms can perform better and see if introducing a quantum aspect would give us, um, give us any advantage. So our materials and methods. First, we start by collecting a data set of 1,711 tumorous and 1,856 non-tumorous MRI images, which is split into an 80 to 20 training to testing ratio, filled with various tumor shapes, types, and orientations. First, the images go through the pre-processing skull stripping algorithm to isolate the brain. Then this acts as an input to the MMR, QCNN, and QVT algorithms. Our main goal is to extract the best features of the models to make, to make a final model to increase the diversity for different kinds of tumors, since the MMR's principle is based on the analysis of shape and structure. In contrast, the QCNN and QVT are based on classification to recognize patterns in complex data. So... Our pre-processing step is skull stripping, which is a vital step when analyzing brain MRIs for any purpose, including for tumor segmentation. In MRIs, the skull and intracranial tissues, which aren't part of the brain, have the same bright intensity as the brain and its tissues. So it makes it harder to segment the brain if you don't first isolate it from the skull. Also, parts that don't belong in the brain add a lot of unnecessary noise and detail. To skull strip, the image was binarized with adaptive Gaussian thresholding. Then two images were created to overlay on each other to determine the final edges for contouring. One mask was created through erosion, so taking away at the edges and removing noise, and the other through dilation, so preserving details and general shape. We overlaid the two masks by weighing them differently, 70 to 30, and it created an image with a good middle ground, enough edges and gaps, thus maintaining the original picture's general contour with a good level of detail and not too much noise. Then the contours of the weighted image were blurred and combined. When the median blurred contour images were set, we identified the wanted contour by calculating the areas and choosing the largest one, which would be the one of the brain. The contour was used to make the final mask and was applied to the original MRI image, producing the final brain stripped image ready or skull stripped image ready for further processing. So as shown, the skull and intracranial tissues or the bright border surrounding the brain is removed in all four results. And 
in the post, in the skull stripped image, the brightest things remaining in the MRI are the tumor itself. Removing the border helps with detection because of this and makes the QNN and MRR, MMR algorithm more efficient in processing and spotting it. The mathematical morphological reconstruction algorithm is the next step to our overall model. It will apply the skull stripping output as its input. We have gotten results for the MMR, an accuracy rate of 92% through repetitive ratio testing. The MMR enhances and extracts image structures by iteratively combining dilation and erosion and watershed thresholding operations throughout its iterative process. Dilation enlarges regions in an image, whereas erosion erodes the boundaries of regions in an image. The algorithm removes noise and artifacts by creating the marker image, which represents key points and mask image based on the regions of interest and morphology operations for noise removal. Finally, watershed thresholding and segmentation is applied based on the concept of segmenting the ROI through a watershed line. The creation of a marker and mask image guide the four-step reconstruction process. After fine-tuning noise removal with a peak signal-to-noise rate of 39.8, subsequent morphology operations are deployed. The integration of watershed thresholding and segmentation yields an impressive 92% accuracy rate in early stage tumor detection. And based on these results, this algorithm works fairly well with early stage tumors. These are some detection results from the MMR algorithm. The tumor is circled in red, and the size and location are visually accurate. To find the accuracy rate, the ratio of the values taken from 0 and 1, 1 meaning true yes tumor and 0 meaning false yes tumor, resulting in a 92% repetitive ratio accuracy rate. We plan to add this algorithm for our overall model because of tumor diversity in our data set. As MMR is a less strong algorithm than our deep learning methods, we will use scans for a more vibrant tumor gray ranges. So the next part of our model is the QNN algorithm. At our stage in research, we are currently finishing the process of building our model, and then we'll do training and testing. So for the QCNN, we'll be using the architecture of the classical convolutional neural network, or CNN, but in a quantum environment. So the CNN is a deep learning algorithm that feeds training data and detects patterns to process and classify our data set. The algorithm can classify and label images based on image structure, and a classical image, uh, a classical CNN will consist of an input, some hidden, and output layers. For example, here there are two hidden layers, but you can customize these towards your goal. In this image, these circles are perceptrons, which can take an output and give an out, uh, take an input and give an output. Sorry, the algorithm's learning process adjusts these weights to detect patterns. To take a closer look at the hidden layers, in our case, we are primarily looking at convolutional and pooling layers. The convolutional layer performs feature extraction, and the pooling layer reduces the dimensionality of the MRI scan. Finally, the output layer classifies the scan. So our QCNN will use classical data with quantum computing, meaning our quantum convolutional neural network will just use a combination of these quantum computing um, concepts with the CNN that Ryan just discussed. So like the classical CNN, we'll have a convolutional and pooling layers, but we'll use qubits and quantum circuits instead. And as you can see in this image, we plan to apply alternating convolutional and pooling layers on our quantum circuit. And the secondary purpose of our research is to test if the QCNN has a better accuracy or speed than the classical CNN. So the QCNN algorithm will contain three main parts, the encoding, the processing, and then the measuring of the data. So first, the encoding consists of the classical input data, which is converted into a quantum circuit through angle encoding, which puts the qubits into superpositions for parallel computation and applying rotations so the data can be further processed. In the next step, which is the processing step, like this, um, CNN's hidden layers, uh, we'll have convolutional and pooling layers, but instead of having the traditional classical layers, we'll be applying gates and entanglement with specific parameters that are customized to the quantum circuit. And the convolutional layer would involve the same feature extractions that the CNN has. And then the pooling layer would reduce the dimensions of the quantum circuit while keeping the same data. So to do this, we'll encode the information from one qubit to the other qubit. And once we do that, we can disregard that original qubit from the, for the rest of the process. So as you can see in this image here, the data from Q0 is encoded into Q2, and then the data from Q1 is encoded into Q3, 
So at the end of this process, we can just disregard Q0 and Q1, and we're just left with all the data in Q2 and Q3. So essentially, this pooling process would reduce the number of qubits in our circuit, in this case, from four qubits to qubits, uh, two qubits, sorry. And then we would continue to apply this until we end up with one qubit. And then in the end, we would measure the output of that single qubit through a softmax layer, which forms our probability of a specific state of that qubit. And that can help us determine what that means classically. So it would help us determine whether or not there is a brain tumor. Vision transformers are an image processing based neural network that has recently grown quickly by combining powerful techniques such as self attention, allowing each element to make relationships with other elements through comparison of significances and entanglement for parallel computation. The main benefit of incorporating some of these features into the QCNN is that it considers the entire scan through relative positions and uses contextual information in its process. For example, we can refer to this VT that classifies the items of this image. The process begins by converting input data into vector representations, known as linear projection. The anchor layer employs a combination of self-attention and feed-forward layers for effective data processing. Self-attention enables each element to make relationships with other elements, allowing the model to weigh the importance of different elements when making predictions. The model incorporates layer normalization and residual connections to maintain stability and information flow, ensuring efficient learning as it normalizes the actions and connects patterns of the different structures in the image. The decoding layer utilizes mass self-attention for sequence prediction. The final stages of the first half of the process involve a linear transformation and projection for generating logits, meaning output scores, and a softmax layer producing a probability class distribution. So the results from linear progression will be then used in positional encoding, which embeds information about token positions, which is crucial for maintaining sequence order. This contributes to the model's ability to understand and represent intricate relationships within the data. The model's multi-head attention mechanisms allow it to focus on different parts of the input sequence, while the feedforward network employs linear transformations, nonlinear activation, and layer normalization. Residual connections facilitate efficient learning by allowing information to skip one or more layers in the multi-layer perceptrons, or MLPs, which are layers with weight connections. As you can see, the output class defines that this image has a bird, a ball, a car, and etc. Overall, the transformer architecture integrates encoding, decoding, attention mechanisms, and critical structural elements for robust information processing and predictive capabilities. We plan to add this as a subpart of the QCNN algorithm for scans that have more tumors and brain activity, and the QBT will employ residual connections. Our next steps include completing the code for the QCNN and QBT algorithm to compare these results to the CNN algorithm and the MMR algorithm to see if there's any noticeable advantage in terms of speed or accuracy. Finally, future possibilities to expand this project down the line would be to classify types of brain tumors rather than simply detecting them, affecting the action speed for the doctor to initiate effective instruction at an early stage. Finally, we would like to thank our advisor, Dr. McMahon, for helping us throughout this project and ASDRP for giving us the opportunity to conduct this research. We'd also like to thank Adelina, who is a researcher for, from another group, and she's helped us a lot throughout the quantum computing aspect of our research. And lastly, of course, the rest of the researchers on our team who have contributed throughout the research. Um, here's our sources, if, I, if anyone wants to take a look. Thank you. Does anyone have questions?